Hey Yankee fans, it's the holiday season and if you're like Bobby C, you're going to wait to the last minute to do your Christmas shopping. Well, we have a book for you that would make a great gift for any Yankee fan in your family coming up next in the Sports Corner. If there's one Yankee book you should run out and get this holiday season, it's Summers in the Bronx, Attila the Hun, and Other Yankee Stories by Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Ira Burko, the legendary sports columnist and feature, feature writer, joins us in the Sports Corner to talk about his new book, Summers in the Bronx. Well, nice to Ira, be here, Bobby. So thank great you. Great to have you. Well, thank you. Quick, well, there we go. Quick thoughts on Curtis Granderson. Well, he's a wonderful player, and uh, you know the question always is: uh, someone coming to play in New York, especially for the Yankees, can they handle the media? Can they handle all the hype? And um, my guess is he, uh, Curtis uh, Granderson, will be able to. But there's always that question about the, uh, how much pressure can they feel, and how do they produce under that pressure? Curtis has a chance to maybe become the next Yankee legend. He joins a team that won the World Series. In this book, you've covered so many of the great Yankee legends, which leads us to this question. Of the great Yankees, which one was the best for you to feature and why? Um, well, there was DiMaggio and there was Mantle and, uh, and Jeter. In 1999, he was going, it was about near the end of the season, and if he got to hit that game, which he did, he, uh, he becomes the first guy to have more hits in, uh, in history than anyone else in four, in four in first four seasons in the major leagues. More hits than Williams, more hits than Cobb, more hits than Pete Rose even. And uh, there, I don't think there's been a greater Yankee than Derek Jeter um, overall and uh, in the field, uh, at bat, and in the clubhouse. Over 25 years at the New York Times, you retired 2007, now writing books. You have 19 books. You ever get a, a chance to look back and, and just say to yourself, because everything to me, I think, goes so quick. I, I was joking around in the month of October around Halloween saying that I was a tired sportscaster this year for Halloween because the World Series kept me up late. Right. But does this book give you a chance to look back and say to yourself, wow, what an incredible career I've had covering the Yankees? No, I, I look back and think, oh, my God, I did all that stuff? <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard to believe that I had that energy. Uh, right now, I, I look at it, I want to go to sleep. Um, but it's 40 years worth of uh, columns, and there are 66 columns. And going back to Casey Stengel in 1968, uh, and um, up the prologue is, uh, I wrote the prologue the day after the World Series uh, in 2009. Um, so it's, uh, I look back on all of it, and I, it's been a huge amount of fun. Summers in the Bronx. Uh, I wouldn't have traded for anything. So many of those columns, of course, from the Times, but several others from Newspaper Enterprise. And like you said, yeah. writing that piece, the introduction for the book, on deadline, yeah. the day after the World Series. Yeah, I, it's a 2,000-word uh, prologue, and the, the publisher said, if we can get this done right away, we should be able to get it out in the stores right away. Uh, and so um, I wrote it within a couple of hours. I sent it off uh, the day after the World Series. And uh, within a day, it was at the printers, and within a week, the 10 days it was in the bookstores. I mean, it was just, it's amazing to me. Uh, but that's the way it went. Growing up in Chicago, you said you were a Cubs fan in the book. Yeah. Now you're kind of a Yankee fan to a certain extent, right? Well, there's no cheering in the press box. <laughs> and if you say you're a Cubs fan, that disqualifies you from being a sports fan, really. Uh, but, uh, uh, but you had to admire these Yankees. And uh, I, they were such wonderful players and such good minds, such good baseball minds. I mean, they were always in the game. I mean, there was, there was not a better uh, thinking player today than, than the first baseman to share us. Uh, or Jeter, or Damon, or Matsui, or Pettit, uh, these, uh, Sabathia. These guys are, are really just wonderful athletes, but even more so wonderful baseball players. Uh, and I, res I have great respect for them. Quickly, final question to Joe DiMaggio, so many times comes up in the book, another great Yankee legend. What I love about this book is it'll appeal to so many different types of people. You can go out and get it for your dad, go out and get it for your son, anybody in your family. A couple of great stories here, Joe DiMaggio. You, you talk about putting a nail through his head? Well, when I was a boy in Chicago, I sent away for a, I was 10 years old, I sent away for a, a photograph of uh, Di DiMaggio. This is about 1950, and DiMaggio was a great player. And so I, I get the picture, and uh, I decide I'll put it up on my wall in my bedroom. So I take a hammer, I take a nail, and I nail it right through, and it goes right through his forehead. And I didn't think about it until many years later when I was with DiMaggio, and I told him what happened. I said, looks... It, uh, it looks like you're okay now. He says, oh, yeah, I, I heal fast. This was 40 years after I put the nail through his head. 
Ira, you get a chance to get close to so many great Yankees in this book. Yeah. Go out and get it. Like my sports pick, it's a winner. Check out triumphbooks.com. The book is also available at all major booksellers and online, and at stores like Barnes & Noble right here in the Bronx in Baychester. Ira, great to have you on the show. Well, thank you. Thank you, you Bobby. I enjoyed it. it was a great, it's a great thank book. You. I'm loving thank it. Thank you. Thank you.